Welcome to Blind Level Tech. This isn't just accessible tech talk. This is technology on a whole new level. We're showing you just how possible it is to live the life you want. And living the life you want is most definitely and totally what we're all about here on BLT. Anyway, welcome to the show. Hope everybody is having a great day. Well, a great May now, pretty much. I I feel like April kind of came and went with its April showers and all that. And hope everybody is staying warm and dry in this very uh, unpredictable kind of spring weather we've been having. Um, Seriously, I remember uh, at least last week, it just rained and rained and it was was nonstop. It was beautiful. Spring, honestly, is probably one of my my most favorite seasons. Minus the minus the seasonal allergies, but anyway, Kelvin, how is uh, how is your weekend? And how is I mean, how's the weather been treating you? I, I'm not sure why we're talking about rain. I mean, I, I don't get none of that here in San Diego. Mm-hmm. I mean, we we got sunshine, beautiful sunsets. I mean, the, the, it, it's beautiful here. So I'm I'll take my weather over your Colorado weather over there. So, Bless but uh, yeah. So I, I'm really excited about today's topic, and I think it's going to be a really fascinating kind of experience that we're going to go into in how we really, as blind individuals, kind of de- think through a whole different direction than what most people think through. We're going to go into a topic that's a, potentially a dangerous one, <laughs> and I call it dangerous because rabbit holes. Oh yeah, but but what's what's amazing about today's topic? I think one thing that I think what is going to be fascinating is that everybody has their own theory behind it. Mm-hmm. But I think today we're going to really address something that needs to be talked about. Yeah. But as well, really, we need to get the elephant, the pink elephant, give us some notif- notification and saying, "Hey, we need to address this pink elephant in the room." Mm-hmm. Because let's just be honest, everybody doing all this stuff and they're they're creating the ideas and having the philosophies, but is it really good for the blind? Yes, and that's that's what we're going to discuss today. Is we're going to discuss really the philosophy of technology, in particular technological innovations and their significance to the blind and low vision community. So, should we start off first with the pink, sparkly, warkly elephant in the room? AI. Uh, we might as well, man. Might yeah. as well. So, yes, I, as I'm sure plenty are aware of, and I'm sure plenty of people are hearing about it every single day, AI. It's big. Mm. It's huge. It's sweeping the 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 world literally there's new innovations coming out left and right new physical products new pieces of software all sorts of tools with the, with the word ai but in particular in the blindness community there have been some innovations that have really you know helped us out as far as getting access to in- information and really just opening up our worlds but Kelvin, I'll just start with you first. What is your whole take on AI and your whole philosophy of it as, um, you know, and how it will impact us as blind and low vision folks? Okay, so I have three ways we can take a look at this. Personally, we can do conspiracy theories. Like, it's going to be the end of the world and we're going to have robots take over the world. And right. we're just going to sit in a chair. <laughs> or we could take it in a different direction and say, hey, you know what? How could this empower my life to have more independence? Or we can say, is this too much for me to have independence? Mm -hmm. Because I think all three of those are interesting questions to have. And and for me, I kind of look at it from this perspective is AI is a great tool, great tool. It's helped me do a lot of things. I mean, if you go to my podcast and my radio shows, all that stuff, all using AI to make it better, make it more efficient, all of those different things. But if we look at the deeper end of AI, what is it really doing? How is it, how is it impacting us as individuals? Is it making us dumber? 
Is it making us more compliant? And that's something that I'm starting to really start questioning. Because when I was at CSUN this last uh, March, there everything was AI. A- AI glasses, AI canes, AI this, AI that. And, I mean, like the new We Walk, you know, that has AI in it now. And Be My Eyes, which, don't get me wrong, the AI and Be My Eyes app is pretty impressive. And... Like, all those things are great. But the question is, are we losing our ability to use natural abilities? Are we trading our natural ability for artificial abilities? Because for me, that's something that I'm always thinking through. Right. I mean, what about you, Evan? What do you think on this idea of natural abilities and artificial abilities? Well, you brought up some very deep rabbit holey points that I will kind of dance around. I'm going to kind of take a similar approach to you. Um, but in response to your question, um, I there's going to there's going to have to be a balance as with everything else, you know, any every any new innovation that comes out um, because it, it does. AI does for sure have well the, the tools that we yeah, I popped the tools that we know of and that are out there right now do have the potential to make our uh, our our skills some key abilities or just just tedious things that we have to do less um less relevant i i, I guess uh, a good example for me um actually would have to be like writing scripts i uh mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. honestly writing in general for me has always been a struggle i can't yep. I, I do not have a one track mind i have like a 41 track mind i'm like a floppy disc yeah um, <laughs> and, wait wait um, what, what's what, what's a floppy disc right I mean, yeah I, that's, that, that's I, a what? blast from the past <laughs> yeah <laughs> way to throw it back there right <laughs> oh you gotta love it gotta love us here uh but i I, you know, I cannot, my, my thinking when I write things, it's not, it doesn't always come off from other people's perspective as concise. So it, it does help me really, you know, be more concise and it, it really fixes my absolutely God awful spelling and grammar. Thanks Braille. Love you. I love Braille, but it, the c- contractions have, that's a whole nother philosophy that we're not getting into <laughs> but um hey, maybe we should go there I no mean, no no we're already brushing the bubble here man <laughs> no nah, but um it, it already for me has I, i've already started to become reliant on it and that's actually that's what we need to be not careful of but just mindful about is how we how number one? How reliant on are we on these technologies, and how do we rely on these technologies? What do we re- what do we rely on them for? I yeah. say that because um, you know these services are online, and I, I remember a particular time where I needed to um, I needed Chat GPT for something. I needed it to help me with uh, you know some spelling and grammar. Um, I think that's what it was. Either way, I went on and. Uh, their servers were down and yep. so I couldn't use it. And that's something that can happen. And sadly it could happen with any of our lo- lovely little AI tools, even groundbreaking be my AI, mm-hmm. um, you mm-hmm. know? It, so what we, wh- I think what we need to do, like, I guess to, to put it in a nutshell here, um, we need to still, like keep in mind and really practice uh, you know a lot of the skills and tasks that ai makes easier or can do for us we still need to know how to do that as just either backup or because you know there are just some things that we people you know that that computers cannot replicate period and well, we'll never be able to replicate, thankfully. I, I think this is this is where my life changed, mm-hmm. like in this whole perspective, because, and, and this is why I said, do we embrace natural abilities or embrace artificial abilities? Because truly, when you think this through, let's let's just 
thing to three. Okay. Mm-hmm. Artificial ability. It's anything that has a computer or a motor that isn't part of the environment. Let's just make sure that's clear definition there. That's and then artificial. we have natural abilities, which is everything that we use our bodies for, that we use our thought, thought process to do. And what was really interesting for me when I was developing my robot, my, ro- my, my robotic blind cane, that cane was all about artificial intelligence. It was all about using brain technology. It was all about empowering you through non-natural abilities. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But what came very concerning to me when I was building this out what happens when you don't have it? When an emergency comes, are your artificial abilities so strong that you've forgiven up all your natural abilities? And that's something that we really, as visually impaired people, need to think through. Yes, it's great. It's really, really good. But we need to just, we need to, like, we, we just, we need to remember what it's replacing and we need to have a backup in place in case this technology this technology is no longer around or not or cannot be relied upon 100% of the time and i think it's safe to say that no piece of ai technology should be re- ever relied upon or can be relied upon ever 100% of the time because as long as you're dependent on some server somewhere there's always going to be the possibility for something to happen. Exactly. So, and exactly. just to kind of end this topic, because we've been dancing round and round this rabbit hole for a minute here. <laughs> um, AI isn't obviously a new concept at all. In fact, I think, honestly, I think it's kind of started to become a buzzword because do you remember back when, um, when the smartphone, the smartphone came out and every bloody thing had smart on it? You know, smart car, smart fridge. Yep. You know, it's yep. like I think that's where that's kind of the point we're at right now. I, I like to call these a you know booms. That's what they yeah. are. This is where this is for sure. We are in the midst of the AI boom, and yeah. um, and you know we there there are going to be a lot of new innovations. There's going to be a lot of flopped products. I know one one particular product I'm curious about and want to get um, as it would be a great well, review. And it is it there it is a very interesting product. Is that Rabbit R1 AI assistant? Um, and that's it's, it. Literally, is just a little talking, a little display with a speaker and a camera. But, um, you know, it's got generative and uh, LAM, uh, it's whatever the heck, action model, you know, yeah. action-based AI on it. So it's, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's incredible what you can do with it. So the, um, there are pros and cons to that, too. Yeah, you can become I reliant mean, on it. <laughs> well, I mean, the other thing about it, It'll like, your world. well, it, it, it's a great product. I mean, um, I've actually done some research on it myself, and and what's interesting is... Like I have a pair of glasses right now. Oh, you have the AI glasses? No, I don't have any yet. So I, I just have oh. Bluetooth glasses with speakers on them mm-hmm. because I, I'm trying to solve a problem with my hearing aids. But oh, gotcha. But, but we're gonna go down a deeper tra- trail. But down that, my point is on this is by having the glasses that has speakers on it and has a microphone so I can answer the phone and do voiceover on my iPhone or my Apple Watch and all that stuff, it's great. Mm-hmm. But it's an extra device on me. Something and you have that's where and that. I start really starting to think through. Like, I bought another keyboard, like Bluetooth keyboard to travel with me so I can do emails on my phone and all that stuff. And I'm like, this is bogging me down. Mm-hmm. And that's where, as we think through some of this stuff, and I think we'll, we'll, if we have time today, we'll, we'll get into the kind of the, some of the device stuff. But d- will it bog you down to having those glasses? Yeah, it and uh, or this little device in your pocket because it's not something that you can wear or carry. In particular, mm-hmm. we're talking the Rabbit R One. You know, it, it's 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 like a it literally is like a phone. Um, and it's kind of a concept of like clutter versus practicality is what we're dealing yep. with here. But 
Um, I'd actually really like to bring up a concept that um, when I brought it up to you before, it was a, a bit of a dangerous one. Um, <laughs> and that, and it's, it's for me as well. And that is, um, I, I, the only way I can think of calling it is vision tech. In other words, yeah. technology that is used to, um, to act as, in some cases, eyes or, mm-hmm. you know, to, um, to restore some level of vision or I think, you know, I think you get where I'm coming from. Well, I know where you're going, but you're, you're dangerous territory, man. Oh, it is I dangerous mean, territory. I mean, it, this is, this is, this is like on a chessboard where you get all those pawns up and, and, and you got, and you got your queen on the outside and I don't see it coming, you know, and, and, yeah. and we're going to get checkmate here. <laughs> yeah. It's so it, it, it's a very, especially in the blind community is a very controversial topic, but Ah, heck, let's get into it. Um, okay. Uh, what are your philosophies on this type of technology? I just read an article earlier on our human health program, in fact, about mm-hmm. uh, stem cell therapy that's supposed to restore um, vision and s- for certain eye conditions or whatever. But what are your what are your thoughts? Yeah, so th- let's just make sure everybody clear here. We're talking about like implants, gene really. therapy. We're talking about getting your vision back, repairing your vision with technology, with uh, vaccines. Potential implants or glasses. Yeah. So or... We're, we're going to tackle it from that angle. Yep. And here's the question that you have to ask yourself. And again, you're going to get my opinion. Again, it's my opinion, not yours. You can not have your else's. own opinion. You know, don't, don't, don't be blowing <laughs> up my email saying, Kevin, you're wrong. I oh, get boy. it. Okay, <laughs> but just know you have yours, you have your own beliefs, you have but your yeah. own religions, you have your own things. Mm-hmm. And this is just mine. See, for me, in this topic, we, we if we think about this topic, so I've always wanted to get my vision back because I have R- R- Usher syndrome type 2, which is on the uh, RP spectrum. So I've always wanted to get my vision back. But then the question is, if because my vision got him so far back, will I lose? Will I really know how to use my vision again? Because there's already been studies out there that people that have gotten their vision back later in life, it hasn't always been the most beautiful thing to see. No, in fact, brain, on the contrary, it's been an overwhelming. Yeah, traumatic experience. So let, let let let's just use an example here. I mean, I have a friend named Spencer. He lives in Colorado, um, and Evan, you met him. He has a traumatic brain injury, and he he he's also completely blind. Mm-hmm. Between the traumatic brain injury and his eyes, it's extremely overwhelming when the environment just is overwhelming for his ears. Yeah, and. If you look at it from a vision, you lost your vision later in life, or you lost, it's that overstimulating your mind. And so for me, when I look at this, for me, if I got my vision back, would I know what to do with that vision? Would I actually be able to drive a car again? Would I actually be able to do the things that I used to be able to do with vision? vision? Or would I still want my king? What I still want voiceover, voiceover. screen like, reader, screen yeah. curtain. <laughs> yeah, because that. that is that is that is our life. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I, as I look at it all, the other part is if we look at the technology on the um, gene therapy stuff. They're making massive progress on it. It's pretty impressive to see what they're doing. But the question is, that gene therapy is the same stuff that the the structure of that foundation is similar to a lot of the vaccines that we use. And so the question is, is that it for you or against you? That's something you have to work through on yourself. 
Yeah, and then and the, it, go ahead. No, it's well, it's a hundred percent your choice, and you know, it's it's your body. You decide how you want to live and what you want to put in your body, and what you if you want to restore your vision or not. It's um, but there, and then another thing to consider too are like what are the risks because the, you know there's mm-hmm. the potential that you know let's say you have some you know a little bit of existing vision maybe a little light perception or maybe some color and you want to get this therapy but there's a 45 percent chance that it won't improve your vision it'll take everything it, you'll, you'll you'll lose all vision there's that mm-hmm. you know like there are risks and possibilities and everything to consider as with anything any and any new big innovation and and yes as, you know as you said i mean we are we're not even going like exponentially i mean this is like just unpredictably big leaps and bounds of um of new thing of new technology and um and just new um formulas and new basically just new ways of um of of doing well genetic um dna therapy or gene therapy good lord um and or um you know what we talked about earlier with the with implants and all that mm-hmm. um, i mean there, there's one other technology that we haven't really addressed mm-hmm. and that's the chip in the eye oh gosh that's um, a dangerous one <laughs> so that one is different, and in uh, I I think it was a couple of weeks ago I saw the article, and they're having great success with it because what they're doing is taking your retinas and bringing it back, and it m- using the computer chip as your eyes. That was the no, that was the article I read. Yeah, yeah. and so basically that then connect to the brain so it goes past your retina it goes straight to the brain and then it, then it computes and so the again like for me i wouldn't i would never get that myself personally that's just my thing but if that's something that you are interested in all means go for it i mean keep in mind but, the risks that come with it though exactly and so those are the things that you have to weigh out is what is the risk worth Mm-hmm. For me, I have figured out how to live this deafblind life. And I'm really comfortable in my deafblind life. Like, I'm really starting to look into becoming a homesteader and growing my own food and all of that stuff and doing it all by myself. Right. I mean, absolutely. Why couldn't I? Right? It gives you bragging rights, so exactly, you know, and that's it's it's <laughs> unique, and nothing's wrong with some bragging rights. Um, exactly. Real quick, I will go ahead. I'll, I'll go ahead and just kind of spill my two cents um, on this topic because for me as well, it is a very dangerous one. Um, in regards to implants and and or and or glasses or the chip in the eye. Um, for me personally, Evan Starnes, nope, not happening. I am not doing it. I'm not interested in any of that technology. Um, but also, um, I'm coming at it at, from a perspective of, you know, I've never actually had any vision um, except light perception and a little mm. bit of color. But, you know, I've never, you know, experienced like, you know, seeing shapes or, excuse me, any of that, you know, I've, it's, it's always been the same. And I've learned, I grew up, you know, I grew up blind and okay. I it, got, I got to do the, the blind, the every the vision thing. Okay. So I got okay. I got I'm to describe <laughs> what I look like to you. Be like, I got a sick pack. I got massive chest and right. I, I, and I'm really buffy and, and I'm really good looking. <laughs> <you know? laughs> oh man. Well, Right back at you. I'm. I don't know, man. We're good, lordy, lordy. We're going all over the place here. Well, well the thing, the thing is, I mean, that did not drive you crazy. Where people let me describe it, myself it, to you, so that way you can visualize. <laughs> but what doesn't drive me crazy are the amount of doors and opportunities and yep. people 
that I've met because of being blind. Literally yeah. the job I have, the fact that I'm sitting in front of this microphone talking to you guys, the fact that blind level tech exists is because I, I was born this way. And there are yeah. there, you know, I could go deeper and deeper into this topic, but you know, honestly, it, it's, it's a huge philosophical one. It's something, um, I could spend hours on and don't want to for the sake of our listeners here. And honestly, like I, I personally, I plan to stay in tune, keep my finger on the pulse of all of these new innovations. But if hypothetically there were an end all hundred percent, um, you know, be all solution that would allow me to gain some or all of my vision back, I, I'm not going to do it. And le- like, I think I, I, I just, I don't want to have to learn how to see, I don't want to have to learn colors or any of that. I I'm okay with where I am. And plus I feel like it would really yank me out of that, uh, out of this, the, the blind and low vision community really. So one thing I do particularly want, and I'm particularly hungry for. Sandwich of the week. So I'm going to start first, if you don't mind, Kelvin, but I'm um, good. Man, I so last night I went to this really good toasted subs place called Chiba Hut. I think I've mentioned it before in a couple of other sandwiches of weeks. They they all of their sandwiches could be sandwiches of the week because they're just delicious. But um, I got this twelve inch sandwich called I think it was called the Cali, and it was oh my gosh! It had like um, turkey. Bacon, barbecue sauce, avocado, onions, lettuce, pickles, spicy pickles too. And um, oh, it was just a mirage of deliciousness. And um, it was it was also great for lunch too. They, they actually do keep pretty well and are still good a day later if you microwave them. So my sandwich of the week this week is the, uh, the Cali from Chiba Hut and Kelvin. What is your sandwich of the So week? mine is a Calvin special. <laughs> let's just put it straight, man. I mean, let's legit Calvin <laughs> special from Summerina with their nice fluffy bread with jalapeno bread with some cheese on it and put some turkey on that bad boy mm. with some Chipotle mayo sauce and put some jalapenos on that bad boy. Put mm. some pepper jack cheese on that and slap it together with no vegetables, even though all the panels are a vegetable, but but like I always I don't I don't eat vegetables. So really but that's my challenge of the week because that sounds really good for dinner tonight. Nice I'm hoping spicy. my wife is going to the bank tonight so we can have that mm. for dinner. But you know what that means now? Um, just me and who I am in my nature, there's going to have to be an Evan special somehow. So <laughs> stay tuned. Uh, One of these days, I'll <laughs> surprise you. I'll surprise y'all when you're not expecting it. You won't see it coming, but there's going to be an Evan special. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I might see it coming, but it might be too late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like this would like be the time to insert the the sound of the the, the passing train, you know, or whatever whatever that sound is. But anyway, I, oh, I'd love man. to thank everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in this week and for joining us down these couple little very very deep and very very dangerous rabbit holes. Um, really hope you guys are digging the new um, the the Kelvin the Kevin. <laughs> the Evan and Kelvin experience here. Good Lord. There's going to be some growing pains and stuff that we're going to work through, but uh, really glad to have you guys along for the ride. And I am really excited to keep going, moving forward with Kelvin here. This is, this has been a blast, my friend. I appreciate it so much. Um, yep. Really want to say too, um, I, I would like to recognize we did, um, we did definitely express a lot of opinions here in this episode and maybe got a little philosophical here. I just want to say, you know, all these are our opinions. These opinions do not reflect af- the views of Aftersight or any of its partners. So just I, I just wanted to throw that out there. Additionally, our Audio Trekkers hike is coming up pretty quickly. In fact, if you're listening on, um, if you're listening to the podcast, you're going to start hearing some little bumpers in front of those because we're promoting it. But it's going to be coming up 
July 27th at Myers Gulch. And you can go to aftersight.org slash hike to register for that bad boy. And, and it'll be if, fun. And if you want me to come up, Oh, you got to come BLT, up. you listener, have to send in 10 different questions that you want me to answer on this podcast. Mm. So if we get 10, then I will be on my way to the hike. So we got to get 10 questions in about what you want to learn more about from myself. And that way <laughs> you get me going on the hike. And Jonathan, he can't Calvin. stack the deck like he did last time. Whoa. <laughs> Very ambitious, Kelvin. Very ambitious. And yes, absolutely. If you've got questions or feedback for us or any topics you'd like us to cover on any of our original podcasts, you can always email feedback at aftersight.org or give a ring to 720-712-8856. Haven't plugged this in a while either, but we have we still do have our shout outs program going. So if you'd like to give a special congratulatory message or just a, a shout out to a friend, a loved one, a puppy, a kitty, whatever, you can also um, go to aftersight.org slash podcast dash shout out. That's what it was. Goodness, it's been a minute. And yeah, you can it's about it's 10 bucks a shout out, but it, it helps us out and it'll help get your it'll help amplify your voice. With that being said, for Aftersight, the entire family here, Evan Starnes and Kelvin Crosby, don't forget to plug in your devices and we'll catch y'all next week. <laughs> <laughs>